Welcome back, lords and ladies. If you've ever seen tanks load their guns, or have ever seen the rounds that are loaded into the guns, then you might know that there are a few different types of round used. So in today's video, we will be focusing on four types of tank ammunition used by modern tanks. Now, there are more types, but we will only be going into four for this video. These four being APFSDS, Heat FS, Hesh, and Solid Shot rounds. So stay tuned to find out what each of them mean, and what each of them are used for. So to begin, let's first discuss how a tank actually fires a round in a basic form. A tank round is made up of three to four main pieces. You have a casing, propellant, and a penetrator or projectile. The projectile will be the same diameter as the barrel of the gun to ensure a snug fit so that the gas is produced by the activation of the propellant, push the projectile out the gun instead of escaping around it. The snugger the fit, usually the better the shot will be. Now we know the basic mechanism in which a tank fires around, we can now move on to the different types of rounds. So first up on the list today is probably the most widely used round in modern tanks, which is the Armour Piercing Fin Stabilised Discarding Sabo, or APFSDS for short. You all might know tank shells to be a casing with a propellant and then a solid round at the end of the casing that gets pushed out with the blast, and you'd be right for older tank shells and the explosive shells too more on those later. But when it comes to APFSDS, they are a little bit different. You see, for this round, we have a casing with the propellant like usual, but it's the round in the end that is different. It comprises of the main penetrator, which is a dart-shaped piece of what is normally depleted uranium or tungsten. This dart, let's call it, is then closed in a metal or epoxy case called a sabo, which holds the dart in place in the casing and also carries the dart out of the barrel. This is because the dart itself is smaller diameter than the interior diameter of the barrel of the gun, meaning it won't have a tight fit to propel it forward, therefore a sabo is added to ensure a snug fit in the barrel. Once the dart and sabo have left the barrel, the sabo will split apart from the dart so that the dart can have its maximum effect of velocity and accuracy. APFSDS are basically large darts, so they will hit the armour and just, well, punch through it like you would expect and they are one of the most deadly to tanks as they can penetrate to or maybe over a thousand millimetres worth of rolled steel, which is a lot. APFSDS is classed as a kinetic round as it uses kinetic energy to kill its target as opposed to the chemicals used in heat rounds or high explosive anti-tank. Second on the list is a round called high explosive anti-tank fin stabilised or heat FS for short. This differs from APFSDS on the base that it doesn't have a sabre and is more like a single round where the projectile fits the gun barrel without the use of a sabre. Heat FS, like APFSDS, also has fins which makes these rounds a lot more accurate when firing. Heat FS uses the power of a shaped charge to penetrate the armour and not just a pointed force like APFSDS. When a heat FS round hits a tank, it will detonate the explosive and push the shaped charge towards the impact point, and the high amount of energy will create a small, powerful jet of molten metal and gas, which melts its way through the armour and then creates a hot spool, spool meaning fragments of the armour that break away with an impact to said armour, that can wound or even kill the crew inside. The use of spool liners can prevent this spool from killing the crew. Heat FS can be very effective against light tanks and infantry vehicles because of its explosive nature. These are classified as chemical rounds and tanks will have prevention against chemical rounds, usually in the form of spaced armour or ERA, explosive reactive armour. If you want to learn more about ERA, I'll leave a great video below in the description to explain this. Third on today's list we have a round called Hesh. Hesh is no longer used as much as the other two projectiles listed previously because of the way it works and of new technology being introduced. Hesh is still widely used by the British Army because of their use of the rifled L30 main gun on the Challenger 2. Hesh is similar to Heat FS because of its chemical classification and use of explosives, but Hesh creates spool from outside the tank instead of blasting through the tank. So high explosive squash head, Hesh for short, works by hitting its target and squishing against it creating a flat disc pat of plastic explosive, which will detonate milliseconds later to create a shockwave through the metal, which in turn creates spool on the inside of the tank, damaging components of the tank or injuring the crew inside. Hesh against more modern MBTs isn't as effective as the previous two, hence its decline in use, but it is very good at disabling or destroying light vehicles and buildings due to the way it works. 
This being a chemical round means it can be defeated by the ERA armor mentioned earlier. The final type of round we will discuss today is more of a category of a round than it is a certain type of round. Solid shot rounds basically act like they sound. They are basically a large bullet where you have the casing, propellant and then a solid piece of metal at the end which uses kinetic force to penetrate the target. Some solid shot rounds can be filled with explosives to have a combined effect of penetration and explosion and some are capped to deal with angles a lot better and some have all three of these combined. But solid shots are not nearly as common now because of the newer round types like APFSDS, HEATFS and HESH. Solid shot was very prominent in World War II and shortly after until the aforementioned rounds came into play. If you would like me to make a video on all the different types of solid shot rounds like APCB, APHE, APHECB and many more, let me know in the comments below because there is a ton of solid type rounds used in earlier tanks so that could be an interesting video. But anyway, I thank you guys for watching, I hope you learned something in today's video, and if you did, share it with someone who you think needs to learn this, or might just enjoy learning this. Check out the Twitch channel for more cool content, and maybe hit up that Patreon page to support the growth of this channel and get your name at the end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon so you don't miss another video. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.